Hi there, come on in. Grab yourself a cup of tea and join us for a wonderful, wonderful few minutes together. This is called Home Keepers. If you've never seen it before, I'm reasonably confident that the name is self-explanatory. And we feel passionate about the homes in America. And if we could just line them up with the Bible, with the scripture, what a difference it would make in the entire nation. So that's what we're doing here. And we'd like to give you all kinds of information to make your life better. Uh, mainly to let you know about Jesus Christ and the way to heaven. And then while you're still on earth, we'd like to kind of uh, give you direction in a lot of important ways for your life. And today is no exception because uh, Deborah Ray, our health expert, uh, who in the past has had Healthy Talk Radio, Healthy Talk Television, and she has been bequeathed with the name of uh, America's First Lady of Health. And we are fortunate to have her on here once a month to talk about a variety of things. And this is for your good, hopefully for your edification. Deborah's here. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make a zucchini quiche. I can hardly wait to have a bite of that. That's something that's right down my alley. And we're going to talk about that kind of an entree uh, for your own kitchen, for your own family, and uh, special roles that it can really take. It's, it's important. Uh, you don't have to have a steak every night and all the accoutrements that go with it, all right? Before I join her, though, I want to again, and won't be much longer, we will not offer this anymore, the Bedtime Bible Stories book for your children. You read it to them. You read it to your grandchildren each night. It has 365 Bible stories. I can't think of a better, more organized, precise way uh, to get the Word of God into your children and it has a story for each night, beginning with Genesis, and then at the end of the year, you're in Revelation. Gives a great overview. Personally, I'm going to use that for my bedtime uh, for the next year, because I read the Bible anyway before I go to bed, and I'd like to try this. Also has a couple questions at the end of each uh, reading uh, that you can ask the child, depending on their age. And it's a wonderful, consistent way to get that Word of God into them, what's so important. And the good news is it's yours for any amount any amount you give us of course helps us stay on the air helps homekeepers to continue coming your way so it's a great 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 trade-off and the address is on your screen as homekeepers 69 box 6922 clearwater florida 33758 and just write to us send us your offering hopefully you'll make it as good as you can and we are still workers together trying to get the word of god out all right, I've joined Sister Stephanie here. Mm -hmm. Susan was uh, cutting the zucchini and got carried away because I was yes. going to do one just to show <laughs> my but talent. But then it wouldn't have been cooked anyway, so it's okay. My zucchini talent. You know how to slice zucchini, right? <laughs> um, you know what I wanted to bring up about this particular uh, dish is that when I was a teenager, my parents went through a rough financial patch. They didn't ever discuss it with us. You know, maybe you should, I don't know, but I was just as carefree and had no idea the burden they were carrying. And a lot of times, the entree was macaroni and uh -huh, cheese. Uh -huh. And here I am. <laughs> I'm still here. It didn't hurt me. And so there are even more recipes today yes. that are creative mm -hmm. and they're inexpensive. You don't have to have a big chunk of meat every night. Right, That's right. And this smells so good. I can't uh -huh. wait to try it. Mm -hmm. So you have, you're going to put together eggs, ricotta cheese, half and half, and um, some spices together. We have a, a pie shell that we mm -hmm. baked. Mm -hmm. It looked prettier before it baked. I'm not sure what happened. And then Looks I have good some to me. zucchini that I'm just sauteing a little bit to get it a little soft. And then mm. three eggs and um, do you know how much ricotta cheese? Oh, there's a shell. This uh -oh. is why you don't crack your eggs right into your bowl. The show's only 30 minutes. Hey, you did it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah somebody. Oh, get it here. There you go. God made fingers first. Oh my first. gosh, really? <laughs> there it is, okay, got it. Okay. Don't crack eggs right into the bowl. I know. 
<laughs> you know, as old as I am, she keeps teaching me, and I appreciate it. Okay, so you have the three eggs. Yep. And then we're going to do half and half. Mm-hmm. We're going to do some ricotta cheese. Mm-hmm. Do you remember how much is in there? Uh, ricotta. A cup. Yeah. And then this is um, basil and salt and pepper mm -hmm. and garlic powder and oregano. And um, if you add a salad to this, you got a meal. Yes. Because the crust gives you your bread and yeah. got some good uh, protein, good Let vegetables in there. Up. So we're just trying to help them save money, aren't we? Yes, this is a great, although eggs used to be a cheap protein. They're, They're not, not a cheap anymore. protein anymore. Yeah, they came out with some reason why they, they went up. When they do that, I don't believe them. I don't believe anything don't believe they them. say. Okay, so baked pie shell. I'm going to put half of the zucchini in here. Well, they better stay tuned to hear Deborah because we're going to talk about how the government is okaying. They have engineered a salmon to grow fast. That just doesn't sound right, does it? No, I won't be eating any of it. Okay, mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna put that right over there. You're doing a great job. Oh, doing good. I'm glad your right arm's gonna be built me. up. Okay, do you okay. want that? Because yes. I'll get this one. So I'm gonna pour this mixture right in here. Mmm. Yummy. Oh man. And then I'm going to take some of this zucchini and I'm going to make it pretty on top. And then you bake it for 50 minutes. And you bake the, the crust ahead of time. Right. And then you bake this for 50 minutes. About 350. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It looks like a nice custard. Oh, that looks good. Grab yourself a fork because I think we used that other one on the raw eggs. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Is it delicious? I'm going to finish this. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll interview Deborah. <laughs> no, leave and, my you, and you eat your zucchini quiche. That is delicious. Mm. There's, a, there's an entree right there, friends. Mm -hmm. That basil and that oregano mm -hmm. Good stuff. really adds to it. Mm. That's what I've noticed about some of the recipes that we choose. It's that little seasoning little that makes yes. a difference. Uh -huh. Yes. This is called zucchini. Oh, that is quiche. delicious. You mm -hmm. want this recipe. Yeah. So it's, easy. It's free. So um, email us. That's the best way. And when you write to us for it, if it, it would really help if you'd send us a self-addressed stamped envelope because it's getting kind of a or volume, a volume going. Just send a stamp. Well, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Stay with me. If you haven't met Deborah, I want you to meet her. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Deborah was just talking about uh, all the things you could add to that recipe, and it would be very filling. And That's so the broccoli gone, mm -hmm. the onions gone, mm -hmm. mushrooms. Uh -huh. Really, <laughs> yeah. There's no end to uh, how creative you could get. Welcome back. Thank I'm you. I'm glad to Thank have you. you. Nice to be here. See this? Yes. Yes. I don't know if they can read it. Prescription drug use up. That's a shocker, isn't it? Um, talks about the study also documented a spike. Um, in the share of adults using five or more medications, the figure jumped from 8% in uh, 2000 to 15% in 2012. You know, the average American over the age of 60, that's you and me, mm -hmm. uses at any one time 12 different medications over the course of a year. I'm not using 12. Me either. <laughs> You're not using 12. Well, somebody else is I'm using I'm not using ours, any. <laughs> ours and then some. Uh -huh. Just think of the cost. Mm -hmm. Plus, each one of those depletes the body of a nutrient or causes the body to use nutrients in a different fashion. Mm -hmm. So there's always a side effect, mm -hmm. always a side effect. And sometimes medications are absolutely necessary, uh, yeah. but we don't 
use the lifestyle choices mm -hmm. that we should first before the medication. What do you say to the, because I'll be honest, I've turned down a couple medications that my doctor um, prescribed. And I had reason, I had knowledge and all that. I don't recommend that for everybody. But a lot of times we go in and thinking doctor is always right. So what should a person do when maybe, maybe they know for sure they need the drug? That's fine. Uh, but what kind of a thought process or question should they ask? I mean, you should always ask in terms of, okay, what are the benefits versus the risks? Risk to benefit ratio is one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. And then ask, how long has the drug been out? Just because it's new doesn't make it better, it makes you the experiment. Mm -hmm. Because unless that drug has been used for years and years and years, you don't know how it's gonna react in you, much less somebody in childbearing age in future generations. So those are two very important questions. And then always ask, is there something that I could change in my lifestyle that I could try first, doctor, and then if it doesn't work, then could I try the medication? And mm -hmm. if you've got a good doctor that's, you know, that's open to that back mm -hmm. and forth, uh, in many cases, and we'll talk about it, a, a the one in questions <laughs> at the University of, of Toronto, that the, the, you know, the dietary approach actually has good side effects where you often don't find that in the use of medications. And Dr. Young pointed out something one day that <clears throat> I'd never thought of, that for the most part, you've got to throw diabetes out and that kind of thing, for the most part, prescriptions are supposed to be temporary. Yes. And Not people get them on for a lifetime <clears throat> to say nothing of the cost. Uh, says we have a culture in this country where we use drugs to treat different health problems. And <clears throat> instead of, like you said, exploring other uh, we avenues. We medicalize you know, conditions now. We mm -hmm. medicalize thinning of the bones. It's not a disease, but we use it as, a, as, a, as an opportunity to prescribe medications when high blood pressure, high blood sugar, uh, thinning of the bones are all symptoms that we should be making some changes in our lifestyle, not just reaching for a medication. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's so important <coughs> that we point that out because so many people just go along with the culture and the culture, I, listen to me on this, because I am absolutely just, I'm just drawn in by it because you can't watch a 30 minute program without probably two prescription advertisements. And why, see, they want you to watch the optics and they've got this low voice going, you know, you, you might want to think about suicide, diarrhea, throwing up, all this, all this low voice that you're not tuned into. But on the screen, they have small town America and they're walking around and they're laughing and they're picking flowers. And I'm on to them. And so I wanted to, um, it, because it just, I, I don't know, I, every time I see one, I think for heaven's sakes, pharmaceuticals own this nation. Right. And the lobbyists, of course, own Washington DC. So we're lobbyists than any other industry mm -hmm. comes from the pharmaceutical industry. We pay mm -hmm. more for prescription drugs than any other country on the face of the planet. We take more prescription drugs, but if you look at our health, we're not the healthiest. No, we're not. Put it together. Yeah. And a lot of people are getting them from Canada. Yes. Because the American prices are just criminal. Um, I, we might have touched on this once before, but I'm not sure how much time we had. And that is, since you were on, I had uh, Rebecca, a uh, friend on, who deals in essential oils, oh, teach, teaches it. Therapy, yes. And has a book on it, which we've offered. But I think you sent me an article where it has been shown to help children with autism. Absolutely. Now, why? How does that work? Well, those essential plant oils uh, have amazing medicinal benefits, and there's some great British research that actually shows some of those medicinal oils actually help the aging brain, Alzheimer's patients, become more quiet and more focused. And of course, with so many children, you know, now it's one in 90, when physicians who went to medical school as late as the 1980s said it used to be one in a thousand. Now it's one in 90 children in this country have autism. We still don't know the reasons why, so we're searching for, because there's no one cause, what are some of the you know, ancillary, non-toxic things that we can do to help mitigate some of the signs and symptoms mm -hmm. of autism? 
and essential plant, uh, essential oils, very, very safe or one of those ways to help reduce that anxiety, help that yeah. child focus without medication. Because they have very, very heightened sensory right. ability. Right. Um, and trouble sleeping, said lavender, sandalwood, and frankincense. Now, is that just the aroma? Absolutely. You can put a couple drops. Calms on, them down? Yes. On, on, a, on a tissue, put a couple drops on, on their, uh, their pillowcase. I mean, any way you want to diffuse it into the atmosphere, yet there's so much science behind it. When I read that, I thought, I, she's the one I go to. <laughs> she said, yeah, yeah. Um, I really got my eyes open to the essential oils because I had no idea of their benefit and also that it's big in the United States right now. There's a lot of people learning about them and selling them. Sure, we have so many antibiotics being used these days, yet they become less and less effective. And you see essential oils like tea tree oil, um, effective against the bad bugs, but not disturbing the good bugs, which of course antibiotics have the side effect of doing. Um, so just amazing. How Do you think easy. these uh, aromas would help anybody that has a problem sleeping? Uh, we have a lot of people with insomnia. The science is pretty amazing. Uh, the shows that you know it's certainly not going to hurt you. Certainly worth trying. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't believe that if you had. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the one I was telling Stephanie about. The FDA approves a genetically altered salmon that makes it grow twice as fast. Now, I just hear all kinds of alarm bells going off here. And <clears throat> that there's qu quite a bit of controversy about it, but the, the FDA has approved it. Right, right. What in the world is going on? <laughs> well, unless you buy something that says certified organic, you really don't know. Uh, that there might be a genetically modified organism, whether it's corn, whether it's soy, uh, cotton. Uh, right. Now fish for the first time, they take a gene out of an eel-like fish that grows very rapidly so that salmon can come to market in a year versus three years. But we don't know what it means to feed young children, uh, you know, mothers of childbearing age, these genetically modified, in this case, of a, a fish, the salmon. And they take the, they take a cell from an eel, put it in the salmon. Right. Now, um, I'm sure they still gave a lot of hormones to chickens, and that's why you can get big breasts uh, of chicken, you know, to bake and so forth. But we don't realize now we're farm raising fish uh -huh. uh, because you can make more money. Um, but we don't realize the downside of that. And of course, these farm-raised fish are very, very contaminated because they feed them more rapidly, use ways to accelerate that growth. And now genetically modified, I mean, everyone says that by the year 2050, 100% of the human population will have allergies. I think we're accelerating it with some of these experiments that we don't know if they're safe or not. So uh, people should get educated. Absolutely. And they should... Um there's something called Look at the label origin. Yes, you have to tell the consumer where that product came from. So whether you're buying fish or chicken or vegetables, you have a right to know where that came from. You mentioned Dr. Young. He got interested in this because he had all these allergic reactions. Come to find out the produce that he was consuming at a certain time of the year came from Mexico. He was allergic to the pesticide that they could use in Mexico and not here and said, oh my goodness, I never realized that what I was eating came from Mexico and I was reacting to that. Yeah, and you know what kind of fertilizer they use either. Right. Not at all. Uh, so I wonder, this uh, genetically altered salmon, is that on the market yet? The FDA approved it. And and I don't trust government, I'm sorry. I, 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 and I, th I thank the founding fathers that kind of set it up so you don't trust them. Right. Uh, because the FDA has okayed a lot of things, then in 10 years later, they jerk it off the market that it wasn't good. Absolutely. So you, you gotta be uh, very, very questioning. But it goes back to, if God didn't make it, you know, shop the perimeter of the grocery store. Yeah. All the processed foods inside, yeah. they probably have some sort of genetically modified crop in them. They probably have, you know, some bad fat, some extra sugar that they mm -hmm. shouldn't have, an artificial sweetener in there. If we shop that perimeter, we're the healthier for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And um, you sent me something about in 1763, they used the bark of a willow tree yes. to reduce pain. Right. 
And what did that become? <laughs> the best-selling <laughs> medication of all time, Willow. Uh -huh. Of course, they extracted that active ingredient so they could patent it, mm -hmm. uh, so they could make money from it. You can buy white willow extract mm -hmm. in a health food store or most drug stores these days. Don't have the bad si side effects from aspirin by using much more natural sources of that white willow. But that is in aspirin, yes. right? Yes, that same active ingredient, salicylic acid. And I have read, and boy, there's been enough science <laughs> that you could rely on it. Aspirin is a kind of a miracle drug. Right. And um, we now realize it's anti-inflammatory. Uh -huh. um, so that's good for not only for a headache, but for trying to lower our risk of cancer and, mm -hmm. and uh, heart disease and some of those other uh, debilitating uh, you know, chronic conditions mm -hmm. get more anti-inflammatory. Of course, you and I do that with Fruit of the Spirit, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> willow yeah. is one of those tried and true remedies. Yeah. Now, I do consume a lot of nuts. Um, I go to this Richard's wholesale. The bulk, the bulk section, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I buy every kind, uh, you know, the uh, pecans, mm -hmm. Brazil nuts, mm -hmm. uh, almonds. I just, about every month, I think. Right. I, uh, but something has come out really good about walnuts, right? Right. Because what we may not realize is that two tablespoons or two handfuls, this is not if a little is good, a lot is better, a whole lot uh -huh. is best of all, just two handfuls a day helps to lower cholesterol uh, because it's a rich source of the good fats. So for people who say, ooh, fish, or I'm not sure mm -hmm. about my salmon, mm -hmm. you can get it from nuts which is a great source. You can cook with it, just eat it as a snack instead. And it has not only the good fats, but has other things like folic acid and vitamin E that we don't normally get enough of. So just a little bit of nuts every day. Again, raw, organic, so not roasted, not salted, right. is a great and, way. And the walnut is the one that seems to be... One of the uh, best, but they all have great <clears throat> benefits, no matter if it's a pecan or a cashew. The Brazil nut's very good for you, Absolutely, isn't it? Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, about two ounces a day, so how much would that be? Two small handfuls. Two small handfuls. Uh -huh. I could do that. Um, we're offering people things that don't cost much. <laughs> I know um, my precious brother-in-law, boy, I loved him, died of Parkinson's. And my sister would tell me, uh, standing in line for the medication, that people would walk away with anywhere from 300 to 700 dollars yes. worth of uh, medication and a lot of the things we're talking about. Uh, it's not going to cost you a lot of money. Um, this one was interesting that you sent me. Uh, strong legs actually help your brain not to age. Right. Fit legs, and they actually have a <laughs> medical test now to determine how fit your legs are, correlate, particularly in women, with a fit brain. They're now discovering that there's some naturally occurring chemical that the body produces when you walk, when you're active, that they can actually predict how fit that brain is. So you look at people like Jack LaLanne, who yeah, <laughs> I had a oh, chance yeah. to talk to just before he passed at 96. He was fit, and his brain was like he was 50. He was amazing. So there's something about staying fit that not only helps the, the muscles in our legs, but helps our brains as well. Yeah, I'd like to know the real correlation there. And of course, we know that in children. Uh, they show that children who are more physically active do better on tests. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's something that's amazing that, that, you know, that our God has made for us that just we benefit from. I always loved Jack LaLanne. What was he like? He was just a wonderful wit. One, I didn't know he was a chiropractor. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I interviewed him for many years, found out in later years he was a chiropractor, so he knew the science behind it. Um, but he walked that talk, he and his wife Elaine, uh, who still... Yeah, and on his major birthdays, he, he wanted to do something spectacular. I remember in California, I think it was 80, that he swam and pulled 80 boats <laughs> over to Alcatraz. Absolutely, absolutely. But at 96, he wore no glasses, had the same waist size as he did in his 20s, because he said it was all about making wise choices when it came to activity and lifestyle. And of course, he was uh, you know, just all about his faith as well, that those three will serve us throughout our entire lifetimes. Yeah. And he, uh, he's certainly the illustration of that. Um, the, I think this came from Toronto, uh, the, a portfolio and DASH diets 
lowered blood pressure. I've never heard of either of those. Portfolio of Diet came out of the University of Toronto many years ago. Now they're looking at it because of some of its other health benefits. What they did with the Portfolio Diet, which is nothing more than eating like scripture. In other words, not eating processed food, eating unprocessed food. Mm -hmm. So nuts and salads and steamed uh, you know, vegetables and lots of fruits, getting some good protein and good fats as well. But eating close to scripture, the Portfolio Diet, mm -hmm lowered cholesterol as much as the statin drugs, raised the good cholesterol. Of course, the portfolio diet, no side effects. Now they're discovering that it helps to lower blood sugar and blood pressure as well. And the DASH diet, which came out of uh, uh, Boston University and, and uh, Harvard University, dietary approaches to stop hypertension. They found that 90% of the patients who have high blood pressure could control it if they tried the diet first before they resulted to the anti- They're similar diets. Very similar diet. Heavy on vegetables, right. f fresh stuff. Right. <clears throat> you know, when you think of um, engineering salmon so it'll grow faster, Let's get a life here. And the Bible teaches even let that ground lay sal uh, just fallow for how, how many years is it every? Um, I think it's a, th a three year cycle. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's very back. specific. Yes. It's very specific. Yes. And when you do it God's way, you're going to get all of the wonderful benefits of your prescription drugs with none of the side effects. They're, they're going to work for you. Absolutely. But the rules are so simple. Eat as many fresh fruits and vegetables as possible. Mm -hmm. Eat no bad fat. Eat some good fat every day. Mm -hmm. um, eat some reasonable protein. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Then mind the stresses in your life, you know, hopefully through faith because it has so many great benefits. Regular activity. That's all you need yeah. to know. Get, get off the couch. Exercise. Go, go out and walk a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> this isn't rocket science. No, it's, it's not. It is so basic, and I know we hammer on it a lot, but it'll make a real big difference if you choose to make some changes in the way you're living. It, bodies always amaze me. If you're nice to it for two days, it responds. <laughs> we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what King David said. And as I progress in life, I know exactly how true that is this wonderful body that God gave us, and it's up to, us, up to us to take care of it. And when we do, it will pay huge, huge benefits. All right, I hope you'll join me next time. We are out of time. But always remember, my friend, there's no higher calling, none whatsoever than that of a homekeeper. Be a good one. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.